Hi, Professor Stefaro here, and today's screencast is on energy and the cell. There are three things that we'll cover in this video. The first is an overview of thermodynamics. Then we'll talk about the chemical reactions of metabolism. And finally, we'll tie all of it together by talking about energy coupling. A key feature of energy is that it transforms from one form to another. That is, the potential energy in ice cream held in chemical bonds is transformed to the mechanical work of kinetic energy to power the toddler's muscles to ride that trike. Or kinetic energy of sunlight is transformed by the leaf into chemical energy a kind of potential energy. Biologists study energy transformations because organisms, the cell, exchange both energy and matter with their environment. The potential energy stored in concentration gradients and chemical bonds is transformed into kinetic energy to do the chemical transport and mechanical work we've talked about that cells will do. So let's start with thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the study of energy transformations that occur in a collection of matter. And the first law of thermodynamics states that energy in the universe is constant. Another way to say this is that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is simply transformed. Here are a variety of examples that demonstrate energy transformation. We see the chemical energy in food converted to the energy of muscle contraction. In the center we see chemical energy being converted to electricity which then can be converted to either light or sound from our TV. Another biological example is the ecosystem in which sunlight, form of energy, the ultimate form of energy is converted to chemical energy in the ecosystem and the cycling of those chemical components through the ecosystem is what supplies energy to the plants and the animals of the system. The second law of thermodynamics has a couple of parts. So let's stay with our ecosystem but now let's note that at each energy transfer Notice that heat is produced. Thus, energy conversion always involves some energy loss as heat. This is my kitchen on Sunday after I've put some work in it to clean it up. But here it is before that on Sunday morning. The second law of thermodynamics states that energy conversions increase disorder. And the measure of disorder or randomness is called entropy. This is the idea that some things go from a more structured or ordered state to one that's more disordered or random. So let's take the example we see here. If the particles represent gas molecules at normal temperatures inside a closed container, which of the illustrated configurations comes first? Which picture comes first? Following the second law of thermodynamics, it would be the picture on the right, the more ordered picture which would lead to the more random or disordered arrangement of the particles on the left. This is how diffusion or osmosis works. Another example would be if we tossed bricks off of a truck, which kind of pile of bricks would you more likely produce? And the answer is the one on the right. So simply said, that's why things fall down into disorder, why when things break they don't immediately fix themselves, that heat never moves from a cool object to a warmer one, and it's impossible to convert heat completely to work. And all of those things are true and they follow the second law of thermodynamics. A great example of energy conversion is a car. Here we see gasoline as the potential energy source with oxygen. That gets transformed by the car into kinetic energy that moves the pistons 
and the engine and the wheels of the car and there is heat that comes as a result of that but here's where the disordered part comes in gasoline is a much more structured molecule than the resulting carbon dioxide so it fits that second law the more structured gasoline molecule is broken down to the less structured carbon dioxide and by doing so entropy has been increased cells are small units chemical factories for housing thousands of chemical reactions and cells use chemical reactions for cell maintenance manufacturing cell parts and cell replication and an important energy reaction for a cell is cell respiration cells will use oxygen in this reaction to release energy from food like we see here glucose so glucose in cellular respiration stores chemical energy and that gets converted to the usable form of energy by the cell their energy currency which is ATP we increase the entropy that the cell adds heat and carbon dioxide and water to its surroundings and the ATP energy that's been transformed from the chemical energy will power the cells work so chemical reactions can fall into two big categories in any cell those reactions that release energy exergonic or catabolic reaction or those that require an energy input and store energy these would be endergonic or anabolic reactions and ultimately as you can see in the figure they're coupled to each other in the cell and the key is ATP so let's t take an exergonic reaction first in an exergonic reaction reactants have a lot of potential energy energy is released as products are formed with less potential energy so burning glucose releases energy in glucose producing heat and carbon dioxide and water the amount of energy that's released cells will take about 40 percent of that and capture it to form ATP energy anabolic or endergonic reactions require an input of energy and yields products rich in potential energy so reactants have less potential energy energy is required and products are moved from having low potential energy with those that have lots of potential energy photosynthesis is an example of this so energy coupling uses energy released from an exergonic catabolic reaction to drive essential endergonic anabolic reactions usually using the energy stored from ATP molecules so let's take a look at ATP here it is it powers nearly all forms of cellular work ATP consists of a nitrogen base called adenine a five carbon sugar called ribose and three phosphate groups when ATP is used it is hydrolyzed to ADP plus that phosphate the removal of the phosphate releases stored in the ATP molecule to run endergonic reactions to run cellular work all right let's see if we can put this all together ATP is a renewable source of energy for the cell and supports energy coupling in the cell when ATP is hydrolyzed that is an exergonic reaction that energy that's released when ATP goes to ADP is used to drive endergonic reactions in the cell those reactions that are considered anabolism endergonic reactions are the ones that transfer energy from ATP to form more complex molecules in the cell the other side of the equation is that when ATP is formed from ADP that's an endergonic reaction that is something has to be put in energy for ATP to be formed 
energy from exergonic reactions in the cell drive the formation of ATP. So those are the catabolic reactions. Exergonic reactions from the transfer of energy from complex molecules to ADP to form ATP. So together those reactions get coupled. Okay, so that covers thermodynamics and energy coupling. There's a lot of information there, but really you just have to see that the formation and breakdown of ATP is driving the complex reactions, the metabolism of the cell. And so next we're going to talk about cell respiration, how that energy transfer to form ATP occurs in the cell. All right, hang in there.